Did you know you could create realistic shadows in seconds by stealing them from stock images? Or that you can create or replace hair in 30 seconds instead of wasting hours masking out loads of annoying strands? These are just a few of the hacks, tricks and time saving techniques that we pick up after years in the freelancing trenches but often take for granted after years of repetition. In this video I'm going to break down 7 sneaky ways that pro artists cheat in Photoshop and how you can use these tips to massively improve your Photoshop game whether you're a fresh faced newbie, turbo hobbyist or looking to start a freelance career yourself. What's happening guys, I'm Dean Samid, a pro book cover artist from the UK and you're tuned into photomanipulation.com. To demonstrate this collection of super sneaky tricks today, we'll be referring to a promo artwork that I created for the new Wing Overlay Bundle released on photomanipulation.com. The process for this piece is identical to my workflow as a book cover artist, so it's a perfect demo to show these tricks in action. Just like a pro commission, I had a set amount of time to complete the artwork, it had to be of sufficient quality and serve its purpose of demonstrating and selling the product. With the stage set, let's kick things off with a nice easy tip. Pro hack, stealing shadows. When you're a freelancer, time is literally money. For that reason, we typically use premium stock vendors as opposed to spending hours hunting through free stock sites for the images we need. And even if we do find what we're after, there may be quality or legal issues using free assets for commercial work. Too much time and effort and too risky to our business, not the way to go. One of the main benefits of using premium stocks, however, is gaining access to beautifully lit studio shop photography that often has super clean, matte white or muted grey backgrounds that capture the shadows and that's where our trick comes in. To do the shadow trick, you need a studio shop figure that has a clean background and clearly defined shadows. If you're a total newbie or not currently in a position to get premium stocks, the team at photomanipulation.com have you covered. We put together a free figure stock bundle which has 100 premium assets so you can follow along with our tutorials. An incredibly generous freebie, link down in the description. After you've removed the background of your figure, keep a copy of the original figure stock layer with the shadows. Change the blend mode of the shadow layer to multiply via the drop down at the top of the layer palette and then go image adjustments levels to tweak the strength of the whites and the blacks of the layer. The multiply layer mode will show anything darker than 50% grey so it will retain the darks and knock out the whites of the studio background leaving just a shadow for your figure. Applying a levels command direct to the layer manipulates the strength of the light and dark tones allowing you to control the intensity of your shadow. And to take things even further you always have the good old opacity slider on the layer stack to further increase or decrease the shadow strength. Photorealistic shadows in just a fraction of the time it would take to paint them manually. Yes, please, I'll take that one. Pro hack blend if hair trick. Studio photography for the win, guys. You can use a similar approach to hair as we did with the shadows if you have a figure shot in a studio with dark hair and a light even background. This is a super fast hack for removing the background from hair and retaining a lot of the small delicate strands that usually get knocked out or lost on masking. Create a selection using the lasso tool around just the hair. Select inverse with a shortcut, Command, Shift and I. Control, Shift and I for all my PC hombres and delete everything but the hair. Right click on the hair layer and select blending options from the drop down. On the blend if options you can move the sliders to change how the layer interacts with the pixel data below. Dragging the sliders as they are can give blotchy pixelated results but if you hold down Alt and split the small triangles the blends and transitions become much much better. Each stock asset is different so for this process you'll have to work by eye and experiment with the sliders to achieve the results you want. Much like the shadow trick it's a case of knocking out the elements you don't want and retaining the elements that you do but the results aren't always perfect so you may need to do a little clean up after within the main workspace. As you can see from the demo, it took me a couple of goes tweaking the blend if options and after that I added a layer mask to clean up the edges with a soft edge black brush. Even with those tweaks, the hair on the demo image was still looking pretty janky so I used the burn tool set to highlights, exposure 100 and manually burned the white fringing left on the hair strands by blend if. Super sneaky and the results are pretty decent. This combo of tricks is amazing for keeping all the hair strands intact and only takes a fraction of the time it would take to composite that hair with select a mask or refine edge. Pro hack, cheat with overlays. Ain't got no time for messing about with blend if or masking? Why not just blatantly cheat, throw in an overlay and be done with it? You're a freelancer right up against it, time is ticking down, the deadline is looming and you need to get this piece done stat. Time to bring in the overlays. Another brilliant time saving technique that freelancers often rely upon is using overlays to add details or atmosphere to a piece in a fraction of the time. For the demo you can see how I've used a pre-cut hair overlay to instantly create a new style, again without the need to cut out or mask elements, just drag and drop that bad boy and you're good to go. 
The hair asset is from PM's Instant Hair Kit, a collection of 900 PNG stock hair assets, backgrounds removed, no white fringing around the edges, and all those annoying little strands are left intact. This bundle has been a lifesaver for me and my buddies in the book cover and commercial art industries as working with hair can be massively labour intensive and a huge time hog. You can spend 5 minutes dropping in and cleaning up a hair overlay or half an hour to an hour cutting out hair from photo stocks, getting it perfect with rounds of edits and processing and left with little guarantee that it will look any good after. Aside from the hair, I also cheated by throwing in pre-rendered black feathered wings from the Ultimate Wing Bundle as the project brief is to promote these assets. A nice easy workflow, no compositing, no excessive tinkering, just drop our wings into the composite and we're good to go. I've said it before and I'll say it again, losing time equals losing money when you're offering commercial services. Save as much time as possible without compromising quality, that's the game. It doesn't stop there though. Overlays can be used for a wide range of uses including particle effects, light spills, debris, water and much much more. Overlays are not only time saving assets but also sneaky hacks to massively improve the quality and realism of your work. Pro hack, still from better artists. This next tip is the least sexy of the bunch and it's not something I see other tutorial experts talk about that much but in the creative industries we literally copy all the time. Yep, you heard that right, professional artists copy from other sources, be it the work of other artists, reference images, movie posters or video game art. You name it, we steal it. In the business, we call this process visual research and create mood boards to capture the references in one place and it's a critical part of the freelancer's workflow. For the demo piece, I wanted to mimic one of the absolute legends of photo manipulation, the cybergirl artist Michael O, who was massive on deviant art during the noughties onwards. Yeah, I know I'm old, let's move past it. Michael O is a much better artist than me and the very best at creating those cyber tech panels. So I put together a mood board within the document so I can refer to and copy the lines and shapes of his cyber girls as I'm working on my own piece. When you're using references like this, it's critically important that you never ever chop out pieces from another artist's work and incorporate directly into your piece. Aside from being unethical, it's also illegal and you want to play it as clean as possible if you want to be a pro freelancer. I've put together mood boards for around 95% of the projects I've ever done and for this demo artwork I actually used two. One for copying the tech lines from Michael O and one where I reference the rim lights using works by my buddy Christian Bentelan who's an expert in fantasy highlights. There's nothing really groundbreaking about trying to copy or mimic other artists but the results can be profound. Doing visual research and creating mood boards is one of the fastest and easiest ways to improve at photo manipulation but for some reason it's rarely spoken about. I recommend this process to pros and newbies alike and I personally couldn't live without it. Pro hack, can't draw, pencil. If your drawing skills are less than perfect like mine, you can cheat your way through most things using the amazing Photoshop pencil. As mentioned before, I wanted to copy Michael O's tech panel style, so I roughed out the lines using a cheap Chinese graphics tablet. As you can see, everything looks scratchy and rough as I lack the skill and dexterity of a pro illustrator. Never fear, the pencil is here. With the lines roughed out, you can then use a pencil to trace and create elements that are much more clean and precise. If your hand drawn work is rough and janky like mine, then the pencil can save you from most scrapes. To create the cleaner looking tech panels on a demo piece, I created closed paths with a pencil, then filled with a colour on a new layer. The same process was used to create the panel catch lights using lighter tones, as well as the rim lights on the harder edges of the body. By combining the pencil with a sketch done with a graphics tablet, I was able to create the lines and elements with much more precision than I could do by hand alone. The results can be a little bit too sharp at times, so for a more stylized fine art effect, you can always smooth things down using the smudge tool if needs be. The fun doesn't stop there though. The pencil was even used to mask the individual elements of the piece, process the eyes, create the fingernails and composite the background elements. Its uses are practically limitless. Now I'm not going to lie, the pencil can be a cruel mistress with a bit of a steep learning curve, but it's good news though. Mastering the pencil is just like riding a bike. Once you've cracked it, you have a skill for life. The pencil is a beast that has so many uses and I advise any Photoshop artist not familiar to fire that bad boy up and give it a go. Do you aspire to be a freelance digital artist or make a career out of your Photoshop art? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you got a kick out of this one, throw us a like and subscribe. It's free, easy, and really supports the channel. And if you want to hear me break down more Photoshop tips, there's a React video popping up right here that you should definitely check out. That's it for this one. See you next time. Thanks for watching.